When new marketers are wondering why they're having trouble selling their offers, I find it's because of one or both of two mistakes. Want to know what they are? Stay tuned to find out. What is up? What is up? What the hell is up, my Dark Horse friends and family? Welcome back to another dose of Common Marketing Mistakes Learning. I'm your Dark Horse host, Tracy Raymond. Whew, man, we got a chalk-filled week for you, but we're going to start talking about those those folk, those new marketers out there. And, you know, like I asked at the beginning of this episode, when new marketers are wondering why they're having trouble selling their offers, I find it's generally because of one or both of two mistakes. Conversely, I find that those higher paid online marketers are not making these mistakes. Maybe that's why they're so successful. Hmm? But what are those mistakes I can hear you asking out there? Well, let's get right to it, shall we? Mistake number number one, let me say that again. Mistake number one, <laughs> focusing on selling your product. <laughs> Wait, what? Did you say focusing on selling the product? Yeah, I know, it sounds like a stupid uh, reason, right? Well, why shouldn't you focus on selling the product? Huh? How are you gonna make money if you don't focus on selling the product? That's a very good question. But guys, let me ask you this. When you first wanted to build a long-term relationship with that lady or that guy in your life, what was the first thing you did? Yeah. Okay. And what else? Yeah. Okay. While I might not know exactly what you just said, because I'm recording this now long before you heard it, what I guarantee you didn't say is you didn't ask him or her to sleep with you right out of the gate. You didn't go out there and propose to them on the first date, and maybe you even did not ask them to move in with you right out of the gate. Maybe, you know, right? No, you didn't ask any of those that you did. Is that person still your your significant other? Yeah, I didn't think so, right? <laughs> Here's what probably really happened. You took that first step and asked them out on a date. Hmm? Yeah. And you made some plans for that date. You'd made sure everything went well. And if the first date did go well, you tried for a second date and so forth and so on. See, I think marketing should be very much like that. It's relationship building. Sure, you can try to cold sell your product. Psst, hey, buy my product. Now, unless you're slinging cane on uh, an urban corner in some of the mean streets of L.A. or New York or, or such places, you, you, you probably shouldn't do that tactic. And then occasionally you might even get a yes to that question, that cold selling it, but you will not get enough yeses to build a solid business. Hmm? Now, even if you could offer some of the most wonderful, perfectly made, perfect solving problems, pro product solving, problem solving products in the world, you have still got to build a relationship with your prospects before you can ever even expect them to become loyal long-term customers. Hmm? That's why you need to place your energy and your focus on selling your visitors on visiting uh, on joining your email list rather than purchasing your product. Let me say that again. You need to put your focus on selling your visitors to join your email list rather than purchasing your product, right? Concentrate then on increasing the conversion rate of those opt-in pages. How do you do that? Well, let me tell you. You could split test headlines. You could try different free offers. You could try different calls to the action for each one of those offers. You could try any number of things, right? And so forth and so on. Now, once you get them in there, what do you do? Well, once they join your list, you can start to nurture them. Start to work on selling them on not just one product, but many, many different products over time. Huh. Okay. So, all right. Well, there's, there's mistake number one. What's the second one? Well, the second place where many new marketers slip up is mistake number two, not continually following up from day one. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Let me tell you, I, this one really blows my mind. So let's say you took the advice. All right, Tracy, I'm going to take your advice and I'm going to start my email list. Here's what happens to the average new list builder. They start building their list. Yay, that's awesome. Yay, 
Good for you. You started building your list. All right, let's leave quiet. Take it. Um, but now you only have a few subscribers, right? So you wait to follow up. Then what happens is weeks go by, and the marketer, this new market, finally, finally reaches a hundred or reaches a thousand subscribers, and that's when they decide it was the right time to start creating and sending emails. But here's the problem with that: most people on your list or on their list has already forgotten who the hell they are. No relationships was built. No products are sold. Is it any wonder why the new marketer gives up and goes back to that cubicle that they fought so hard to get out of? Yeah, if you do that, if you wait till you have a hundred or a thousand and you send that first email, here's what's going to happen. That is not what's going to happen. Here's what's going to happen. Yeah, crickets. Yeah, right out of the gate. What you need to do instead is, no matter how silly this might seem, what I'm telling you right now, you need to start following up with your first subscriber, subscriber number one on day numero uno. Create yourself a series of pre-written emails that go out automatically. I know, all my educated folks, you're like, duh, I know this. Are you doing it? Well, good. I'm glad you are. Right, but for those that aren't. You need to create those pre-written emails to go out automatically to your list, and create those emails before you even get that first subscriber. Yeah, see, this gives you the freedom to focus on the very list-building exercise we talked about in step one, without having to worry about creating those pesky little automated emails because it's already done. Everyone gets an email the day they sign up, and then every day or however you spaced it out. Just like clockwork, as you nurture that relationship, you get that second date, and that third date, and that fourth date through those emails. They quickly become accustomed to hearing from you, and in fact, begin to expect to hear hear from you because you're adding value. You are adding value, right? Yeah, of course. And then when you finally send that email to that entire list with your latest offer, they remember you. They connect with you. They're far more receptive to you and what you have to say.、I'm、not saying they're going to buy everything you promote, but they're certainly, quite possibly, going to be willing to check it out if it's the right time. Let me give you one bonus tip here. This isn't a mistake that our folks made, but here's an extra tip when it comes to this: email segmentation. Right? Many of you have heard this. Some of you may have not. So as you're going through the testing phase, maybe you try. Different、uh, freebies, lead magnets, right? Maybe you have a lead magnet on list building,、hmm? okay? Maybe you later on you try a lead magnet on、um, podcasting, right? We're going to talk about my world for a minute, and then later on you have a lead magnet about build your own course. You know, tips about that. Now, as you go through those different lead magnets, what you're going to want to do when someone comes in and signs up for your emails, you're going to want to tag them. Based on what freebie you sent them, because that's going to help you re- help you identify what it is that they're in need of. If someone comes in when you finally drop that podcast,、um, how to create your own podcast freebie? Well, then clearly you have a, an idea of what it is they're interested in. Well, they would like to build a podcast. So you might take that same set of emails that you were putting out about creating their first course. And maybe mold them to how to create your first podcast instead. A lot of the same things would apply, right? Okay. And now you could take it one step further, and the products that you would end up promoting, you could customize your message straight to them because you already know they're interested in podcasting, and you have this new product that you're going to be promoting. Maybe it's not yours. Maybe you're an affiliate, and you figure out a way. How you could use that product to make their podcast process simpler? Maybe it's how they get a better co-、uh, a better guest,、hmm? uh, the next level up guest. Maybe it's how they can improve their podcast process. Maybe how they can improve their podcast content. You took the time to figure out how they could use that product inside their world, which is podcasting in that in this example. And they're like, "Wow, I never thought about it that way." So at least they're going to go check it out and see if. Well, what what traces I could use like this? And as they go through that sales page and get that information, they're like, "Wow, I probably could." And maybe they click that buy button, and you get an affiliate commission.、Hmm? 
You see what I'm saying? So make sure you segment your list as they come into your world so you can identify what it is they're really good at. And let me give you one more bonus. This one has really helped my email rates. As you send emails out, and there'll be a subset of folks that will always, always open those emails, you know, at least a high percentage of the time. Segment those guys out, and maybe you have a sub list called has open. Hmm? Now you could send those folks uh, a separate set of emails because you know those are super warm audience, and maybe they get something special. And you let folks know as, as part of your, your email series that, hey, for those folks that uh, frequently open my emails, you guys get bonus content, whatever that content might be, right? Some sort of present off thing or a special opportunity or, you know, um, a, a private mastermind or part of a Facebook. I'm going to let you in on something I'm doing special on Facebook before it happens so they can be there uh, to enjoy it live and ask you questions. Whatever it is, however you can serve your audience now you're telling them if they open your emails regularly so you're letting them know be sure to pay attention if nothing else just open the email what this does for you is it helps your email provider make sure your emails get through because they see that you're sending out emails to 100 people a thousand people and over 50 percent of them are at least opening it you're a good risk and they're going to make sure your emails get pushed out more and more often so when you finally do drop that offer for folks they're already used to opening your emails and your email provider is already saying these guys love opening his emails so they send it out for you it's a little sneaky under the uh, radar kind of hack there for you all right i've given away too much already so like i said it's gonna be a jam-packed week until next time think successfully and take action thank you for listening to the dark horse entrepreneur podcast Thanks for tuning in. Check us out at www.darkhorseschooling.com. All right. My name is Tracy Brinkman.